All right, hello guys, welcome to my class. How is everyone? For those of you who are new here, welcome. My name is Manuela Sadovnik, but you can call me Miss Sadovnik or Teacher Manu, however you prefer. I am your fine arts teacher here at Vico, and together we will be learning about art history while we do fun artistic activities together. Yes. So before I go any further, please do not forget to leave a thumbs up on the live stream, on this live stream, and subscribe so you can all have fun while you learn here at Vico, not only with yours truly, me, but also with the other amazing teachers that we have here where you can learn guitar, piano, language classes, ballet, you can see storytelling. There's a lot of amazing things here at Vico, so please don't miss out on them and go check them out. For today's class, we will be placing ourselves in the 16th century and meet a very, I was like, quite curious artist that was doing some interesting artwork. He was using some unconventional materials to make like the most craziest compositions back during the late times of the Renaissance era. Giuseppe Arcimboldo. I think that's the way that you say his name, because it's Italian. Remember Renaissance era, Italy? Yes. Was an Italian artist born in 1527, and he was best known for his captivating, imaginative portraits made entirely with elements such as fruits, vegetables, flowers, fish, books, you name it. And who was able to make a whole almost realistic composition of a portrait through the usage of this element. The whole part about being interested in nature. Remember when we were seeing Leonardo da Vinci and the Renaissance era, this was a time about discovering, observing nature, being able to represent it as, you know, like as very realistic as possible and even also try to make it more beautiful than it was, you know, make things that are uh, real much more aesthetically beautiful to watch, more majestic. Everything of Giuseppe was actually interesting because back at the time, a lot of these high-skilled artists were, you know, usually court painters. They were highly requested to depict the common themes of the royal families, you know, religious themes, portraits of the royals and whatnot. And he worked for royals such as Ferdinand I in Vienna, Maximilian II, and his son Rudolf II in Prague. Prague. Prague, I think it, you say it. But the crazy compositions instead, and that is why exactly he was remembered up until this day in art history. So this one, this one was Rudolf II of Habsburg as Vertumnus, I don't know what that name is, 1590. So as you see here, he was painting the royals of the court he was hired from, and in this instance, Vertumnus, the Roman god of the seasons, growth, plants, and fruits, it's a portrayed or is a portrayed as an intention of this somehow imperial allegory. So that this is why I told you that you can use other objects. Here, again, we see he didn't have the ability not only with food, but also with objects such as books. You see that? Books. Here, he was working for the court in Prague, and it was part of his series that he was doing where the Vertumnus is also part of. Uh, so again, depicting members of the emperor's entourage, and this one is the librarian, 1562. He's all made, he's made out of books, and what do you think the beard is of? Like, what are those hairs from? Oh, I know these ones that are in the color, which I really love. I don't know the name. I'm not very good at flowers names, but they are very beautiful. This other one. My God, this looks like this magic creature, isn't it? Four seasons in one head, 1590. I mean, the name is very self-explanatory, the whole thing about saying four seasons, the four seasons, you know? Um, summer, winter, spring, autumn, you cannot name them all. And we see again the same motives, 
like in this case complying all the seasons together into this portrait and you can see that it's using like apples and the grapes and even like these elements of wood you know like the dry leaves and whatnot there you can see it today's activity our own fruits and veggies composition or anything else if you want anything else it's fine all right guys also there was something that i wanted to show you for those of you that maybe don't have anything to paint with well don't get stressed because i found this very interesting site that you can all go to and uh you can make your own let me show you let me show you real quickly where you can create your own piece. So here it gives you like the reference of the um, uh, Giuseppe's art pieces and you can create them yourself. So let's say I wanna make, so you see that? So with shift, as it says here, drag the fruit and vegetables to create an Archimboldo style face, stretch objects by holding down the shift key while dragging, Feed unwanted objects to the hungry mouth, which is this one that is here, down here. So you can create your own, you know, like Giuseppe Archimboldo's face, you know, like that it has like lashes. So you can use this to make the lashes. How about that? Oh my God, I got it lost. Oh, there you go. Also, you can create anything in this one, in this side and it also works for you to make like the reference of your piece so you can also you know go there i already left the the link in the chat box so you can go over there and play around with it today's activity so you see the funny face that i have here is the exact same one that we have in our thumbnail so we are going to do i mean i'm not going to do exactly that one that i see there but uh, it's perfect for me to follow along. You can even also suggest me like what other um, fruits or vegetables you, you would like me to use to create this piece. This, okay, so this is the pear. So I'm, I'm even gonna make like the, the small thing here in the middle. And oh my God, we can even make like a beard. Cherries to make them out. Just like some cherries here. And you see how this type of paint is highly pigmented. Like, it's amazing to paint with. I'm actually not diluting it with water, which I should, so it doesn't take too long to dry. But I guess it's fine. You know, like the eyelids, because they're swollen. They look swollen, right? They look as if they were swollen. Okay, so the eyes also inside of them, since it's lemon, it's going to be like a, like another, like a, like a greenish yellow without, without being green exactly. I don't know if I tried to make myself like clear there, but it's a little bit is a little bit different so there's some bit of a depth you can make a piece you know of of Legos you know make a face out of Legos you can make it out of toys that you have of books you know whatever you have there where you can make like this humanoid composition because the activity is all about that. I mean, in that time, he did it about things that they had surrounding them. And they didn't have the entertainment or, you know, things that we have today, like video games, television, technology, toys such as the ones that we see today, and, you know, so on and so forth. So it was more what they had outside in nature that was their reliable source for imagination now we have way more stuff that helps us as a reference so you can play along with those things 
All right, so I'm going to cover his nose again. I'm going to cover his nose a little bit more again. I'm going to use this other one that I was using previously, this other brush that I had here laying over. Cherries, all right, cherries it is. It is then, you already said it. I'm gonna go with the cherries. I'm going to use another uh, layer for the pear, for the nose, so it doesn't look so translucent. I also very, I highly suggest you guys to always give to uh, three layers at most to your paintings, to the pieces of your paintings, if they require it, require it, because sometimes you see the brush stroke and it doesn't look that nice. So this gives it like a more solid mm, appearance to your painting, all right? Just for you to keep it, keep it in mind. But it's part of the process. Always be patient, but don't get frustrated with the process. And if for some reason you feel that your piece is not as you would expect it to be, start over again. Don't, don't worry about it. Don't feel frustrated about it. Because the more you practice, the more you will get better. And something that Henry Matisse said, only the brave ones risk themselves to be creative. So don't worry, you know, you don't have to stick to standards or anything that you see like, oh, this is the nice way of painting. No, try to discover your own style, try to discover the only, the, your own things that you like and follow that path. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that there right now. Just going to leave it there and I'm going to add some white for some parts of his face just to add some detail so you have an idea of the type of detail that you can add. You have to also know where is the light coming from. So I'm just doing some, you know, some light there. You can add to the apples. you know that they are also a bit shiny so you can do that add some shine to the grapes as well you know so it adds more detail and if you have more detail it will look more realistic and more like it will have more dynamic more visual it will be more visually dynamic for you to, to see I think that would be it for today all right guys so I'm going to leave it at that so you have the idea of how it could be. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Uh, again, my name is Miss Adovnik. I'm your fine arts teacher here at Vico. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up on the live stream. Share it with your friends, family. I would greatly appreciate that. And also, don't miss out on all the other amazing teachers where you can learn a lot of fun stuff here at Vico only. And we'll be seeing each other on our next class, all right? So have a good one, you guys. See you on Friday. Bye-bye.